Look at that, a little fox. My little oasis zone at work. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Father. Foxes have holes, and we have nowhere that we can lay our head. Thank you, God. It's funny, I was on a trail miles away from here that I haven't taken in a long time, and I've seen a fox up there before. I was looking for it the other day, and um, I saw a little fox footprint, but I couldn't find it. And then I come to work the next day, and the fox emerges out of the hole. That's funny. That's amazing. And over here on the East Coast, my goodness, it is such a beautiful day today. Hallelujah. I've never been a big fan of the summertime. Look, it's just chilling. Never been a big fan of the summertime. My birthday was August 22nd. And ever since I was a kid, I just did not enjoy the heat. <laughs> I like the cold. I like bundling up, snowboarding. You know, you can always put on two sweatshirts. But there's only so much you can do in that heat. Now that the seasons are turning, I, I just feel them there. I feel so much better. It's been a very trying and and tough summertime and only by the grace of God literally the grace of God was I able to get out of it this is all by faith through, through grace and that's it it's there's nothing we can do there's nothing we can do there's so many things I want to say but I don't know God just has me in isolation basically aside from work I really don't interact with many people but God's been putting on my heart to start doing some uh, some street evangelism you know, I go into work and I wear my my Jesus hat and God does lead me to, to people who who are in desperate need of of the word some ministering especially the industry I'm in I see a lot of overtly manifested demoniacs and my heart hurts almost every day I go to work I see people who are just totally totally down and you know sometimes I preach and sometimes I don't I'm sure it's a sin to to not preach to every single person that that God tells you to <laughs> I mean just the list of sins in this world <laughs> It's like you're saying you have no anxiety whatsoever. Are you housing the homeless? <clears throat> have you sold all that you own to support the workings of God? <clears throat> if your hand calls you to sin, did you cut off your hand? See, when I first came into the faith, I basically, I only read the Gospels. And I basically only, I would listen to the audio Bible more than I would read it. And I would only listen to Matthew, basically. And the first thing you, you hear Jesus say is, you know, be therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. And that's just not realistic, being in this flesh suit. It's not. And I could lie and say, you know, I'm, you know, I still don't hold resentment in my heart for my mother sometimes. I do. <laughs> I do hold resentment. And I know that... I asked God to to heal me of it. He hasn't healed me completely of it. Now, there's, he's done amazing works in my life, you know? Healed me from agoraphobia. Healed me from horrible anxiety and depression. I couldn't even function. I'd lay in bed all day for weeks on end. God got me a job. After COVID, I didn't work for, I don't know, like two years or something. I just read the Bible. I found God right before COVID and I think November of 2018 yeah 2018 or maybe 2019 I don't know but I just he's done so many he's he's given me the supernatural confidence to preach the word he's, he's led me on street corners to, to preach and you know I preach to like the tatted up stripper who comes into my place of, of work you know and oh he's so good He's so good but at the same time you know i'm not healed of everything i still have bouts of you know i see the world and i know it's going to lead to some overt wickedness like fema camps and you know and implantable chips that monitor you everywhere you go like we're, we're merging into george orwell 1984 it, we are literally 
seeing that book. That book was a prophetic book almost. And we're seeing that, you know, your TV listens to you and <laughs> and you say the wrong even if you're if you're playing video games, like there's some video games if you curse in in the uh, football game or whatever and your microphone hears that, you get a technical foul for it. Or whatever, you know? <laughs> That's this world is overtly evil and no one no one with any kind of discernment is going to look and say, oh, this place is going to get better, you know? And presidents don't really have power. They, it's their overlords who... But you get what I mean. And I still have anxiety about this world, you know? And I still have days where I don't want to go to work. There's still moments where I get... Especially the store I'm working at, a lot of the inventory is missing due to uh, the owner kind of going off the deep end, let's just say. So for the last two months, it's been nothing but people coming up to me and complaining. Oh, where's all your inventory? Are you guys going out of business? And people get on my nerves sometimes so bad. And even if if you don't love your neighbor perfectly for a microsecond and you live by the law, you break, you get a little anger with somebody and then you are guilty of all the sins. You are guilty of them. You're guilty of hanging up Jesus. So it's a matter of being realistic. There was a person who's a sinless perfectionist who made a video based on the comment that I left. I haven't even watched the video. But I already know what he's going to say. He's a person that says, if you have any kind of sin that you're struggling with and it hasn't been healed yet, then you don't have the Holy Spirit and you're not going to go to heaven. I mean, these people operate by way of the spirit of narcissism. Yes, being holy is good. Yes, what sin do you want to keep in your life that's gonna like, I'm just gonna be a lifelong alcoholic and that doesn't mean that you're not saved it means that your life is gonna be tumultuous and God's gonna keep trying to bring you on that path of okay yeah you can be healed by way of the power of God and it's nothing it's it's all predicated on your faith and it takes time anyone who's like oh you accepted Jesus and the next day uh, you still have reoccurring sin you're struggling with and you're not going to go to heaven if you don't kick that that's craziness bro that just throw away all of paul's writings are you one of those crazy people who go oh no paul is the antichrist paul is the pharisee he's he's the scribe everything that paul writes makes perfect sense it's like okay so a 15 year old who accepted jesus past the age of accountability you know is in this world and he struggles with video game addiction is god gonna kick him into the everlasting flames because he has things that he's struggling with and he's young if he unfortunately passes away is god good or not that's the question let's say you have a friend right and you go up to your friend and you haven't seen him in a while you're like oh wow hey bro how's little timmy doing he has a son <laughs> and your friend goes uh well little timmy struggled with smoking weed and i told him not to and he kept doing it so I had to excommunicate him from the whole family. Would you say that's a, you go, oh, that's a great parental move. Little Timmy never wanted to listen, kick him out and don't let him ever come back. Actually, raise that up a notch. Not only did you excommunicate him from the family, but you banished him to a work concent concentration camp <laughs> to be killed off. <laughs> that is, would anyone say that's a good parental move? God is love, right? <laughs> or is God just a horrible... Is God like a Hitler figure? <laughs> I mean, honestly, would you say... <laughs> that was a great parental move, guy. Wow. Yeah, he doesn't deserve to be in the family. My mom did that to me. I was smoking weed at 17. And I was basically... Like, not, not formally excommunicated, but nobody... Like, I got kicked out. And my mom, like, never called me again, basically. And she used to be a hippie chick, like, back in the day. She used to drop acid, used to do all this crazy wonky stuff, a little party animal. And she gets married to a military dude, and, and now it's like, oh, I'm going to unrighteously judge my own son. And there's addiction in my family on my dad's side. That's Everyone on my dad's side is, a, is an alcoholic, basically, or addicted to some type of drug. And to see your son going down, like, a, you know, level one of that road, and then you go, oh, well, you know. The answer is, 
I'm just gonna kick him out and he has to go fix himself before he comes and re-antiquates himself back to the thing. That's not love. That's not love, bro. And God, he doesn't want any of his people to struggle with sin because it doesn't, it leads unto death. Not not your soul salvation. It leads unto, unto ramifications that you feel in the flesh. Flesh and spirit are fundamentally different. I think we all, uh, if you come into the faith, I think we all had a bout of, if you learned yourself, you know, you didn't have a, an overseer to bring correct doctrine to you. We all think that you have to stop all sin to get to heaven just based off of what Jesus said, you know? But it's, you know, Paul's writing, oh my goodness, it's it makes perfect sense. Like, in the flesh dwells no good thing. And when I want to do good, sometimes I do bad. And that's just because I'm in this flesh suit of death. And it's unrealistic to tell somebody, oh, you have no salvation because you struggle with one sin. Are you saved by great by faith through grace? Or are you saved by your works? It's either all faith or all works. You add one work to it and what is it? What is it? I, I know nothing can separate me from the love of God. When I was struggling with, with faith in general, he sent a brother who lives right down the street from me to almost dang near run me over to re to reinstill the importance of God in my existence and I saw like God will leave the 99 to retrieve the one I saw that and I felt it personally when, when brother Joshua prayed for me on the side of the corner man I felt the Holy Spirit as if it was the first day accepting God I went oh that's right oh I've been being attacked by the devil oh duh the devil wants me to lose faith. He wants me to think that this is all craziness. And then I realized preaching Jesus and being a minister of God, to that's the only thing in life that matters. Am I going to live life to try to acquire Babylonian magic square shekels and acquire earthly goods that are going to diminish? Or am I going to store up my treasures in heaven where the moss and rust doesn't corrupt? It all makes perfect sense. It all makes perfect sense. And if God can save Paul, who was Saul, and literally murdering Christians, what makes you think that he cannot save you? What sin are you doing that, that's going to separate you from God? If you have the Spirit of God in you, it's not the Spirit of God's not going to lead you to murder somebody. But even if you do murder somebody, you will be forgiven. Now you're going to face ramifications for that. Have a guilty conscience for life. Probably end up in jail for 30 years. You know, everything. If you're an alcoholic, like I said, you're going to struggle with, you know, a bad liver, plaque psoriasis, waking, waking up hungover every single day. Never feeling never feeling good in your own flesh. You, you need something. You need something. But by way of the power of God, if you earnestly call out to him, he will. And he knows your heart. He will heal you. When I first started working at the place I'm working at, I'll tell you, I get everything at wholesale price. So I could get alcohol, like a bottle of 151 rum that we sell for $19.99. I could get it for like $7.50. And for the first few months I worked there, I went crazy. I went crazy. I was stressed out. I was living with, I love my pops, but he just, he loves manifesting into the devil <laughs> unrepentantly. And that hurts my heart. I don't want to see him you know, because that doesn't feel good to just manifest all that hate and nothing's good enough and, oh, I'm such a poor, special boy. Like, that's not a good feeling. But even in my state of rebellion for three months, God was still sending me signs. He was still leading me. He was still leading me to minister to people, even if I was drunk. And I just see how good God is. And eventually it got to the point where I was just like, God, I don't want to be like this. What is going I'm turning into my father. And that's when he started to heal me supernaturally. And it took a month after I really cried out to God to to start getting healed like 100%. But it happened all by way of the power of his spirit. God is so good. That's what he doesn't want. God's not here to, you know, he doesn't rejoice in, in cracking the whip on people who are disobedient. He embraces you like a loving parent. If you're a parent and, and your child is, you know, going down the, the wrong route... Do you go, oh, he's he's not living up to our standards. He can't be a part of this family. Or do you go, oh, man, like, I really hope 
I gotta embrace my child and try to try to lead him to the right direction. That's what God is constantly embracing his people and leading them to a better to a better circumstance. All glory be to God. And even at my job I've seen I've seen bumbling career alcoholics who every time they come in they, they talk about Jesus to somebody who's online. I I know multiple people like that and I've seen and they even, you know, we confess our sin, sins amongst each other. And, you know, and most of these people I know are, are doing things that God does not rejoice in. And it's like two people fell off their bikes. This, this, I'm not even going to say her name, but I have a sister in Christ who comes and brings me um these little, it's called Mornings with Jesus. And she'll bring that every month to me. Great soul. Like you can see that she has the Holy Spirit. But she, she told me, and this was very off-putting, she said, Oh, anyone who says that Joel Osteen is a false prophet because she loves Joel Osteen and, like, Joyce Myers or something. She's like, anyone who calls Joel Osteen a false prophet is the devil. And I'm just like, oh, listen, sister. <laughs> listen, sister. That I wouldn't say that if I were you. And then, like, a week later, she falls off her bike and breaks her arm and then later on i find out that you know she, she's having fornication with another brother and who and that brother has a girlfriend right and next thing you know she like she falls off her bike again and breaks her arm i go oh that makes sense you know you do wickedness and there's ramifications for it that doesn't mean that she's not saved now she has a very tumultuous life because you know she wants to dwell in some uh, pretty pretty deep rooted sins that doesn't mean that she's not saved it's either you're saved by faith or you're saved by works there's no in between because once you bring in works it's 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 all subjective how many good works do you need to get to heaven i have catholic family members who are you know very lukewarm and i'm not mad at them for that but they'll tell me oh i've done far too many good works to go to hell and i just go well, you don't believe on Jesus then. Grace alone through faith alone. That's it. That's it. The gospel is that Jesus died for our sins. Died, buried, resurrected on the third day. And now if you truly and earnestly believe on that, then you then that's exact that is salvation. Is believing on that. Everything in the Bible, it's a guideline to make your life less tumultuous. That per, basic instructions before leaving earth. Everything that Jesus said is makes perfect sense in accordance to this is how it's set up. Nobody could ever maintain the whole law. So anyone, like the dude who made that video on me, he, he claims that he's been perfect for over a year. I'm like, so you did what nobody in the Old Testament, what the Pharisees and scribes, like, they all claim that they, they're living under the law, but all of them, all of them are false people. They're lying. They're lying. The dude made the video on me. He uh, he like justified lying to somebody. He's like, well, I had these uh these two people with special needs, and I took them on a road trip to a Christian convention, and I promised the state I would give them the medication. But since the state doesn't really care about them then I'm justified in telling them I will and then not doing it because I know they don't have our best intention their best intentions at heart like that's that's a lie straight up you tell someone you're gonna do something you don't do it because you feel like you don't have to that's a lie and that's how delusional people are instead of just saying oh you know there are some days where I just I'm not perfect and I lie some you know there are customers who come in ask why there's no inventory and I say I have no idea but I know why we don't have any inventory. But those people don't need to know. And I, I'd be, you know, I'd be gossiping about people if I didn't just say, oh, I'm not, sh I'm not quite sure. Now, is God going to send me to, if I was sinless everywhere else, is God going to send me to hell? Because I tell, I tell like half the customers, three quarters, that I don't know why there's no inventory. <laughs> it's, uh, if you don't believe in faith, by grace then just throw out all of Paul's writings you you can't you can't take Paul's right because you start reading Paul 
And it, it contradicts what Jesus says. <laughs> so how are you going to main how are you gonna take the Bible as being the authentic word of God when half of half of the New Testament is a contradiction well not half, but whatever percent of the New Testament is a contradiction. It's not possible. There's only one way to heaven, and that's believing on Christ Jesus, believing that he was the Messiah, believing that that we are wicked by default since the day we're born. And that makes perfect sense, man. And people are people are coming around, I'll tell you. Even uh, even super mega stars like Eminem or or Kanye West or whatever who like don't you think God can save them too? Can you really sell your soul and then never get it back? Like the soul is owned by God. I think that if Eminem truly believes in Jesus based off of that song that he put out, he'll be in heaven way before the perfect works-based salvationist. Real quick. Eminem will be <laughs> Eminem will be in heaven. Do you know how many people probably are like, oh, I have to pick up my Bible. Eminem and Kanye West on a track both promoting Jesus. Oh man, I gotta look into that. Kanye West probably has more good works than a a lifelong workspace salvationist does in their whole life just putting out that one song glory to, i listened to that song i started crying and coming into the faith i was the biggest i was the biggest judger of 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 all people i've known about people selling out how evil entertainment industry is i've known all of you know bohemian grove and they eat the babies for adrenochrome i've known all that for over a decade so I came into the faith, I'm like, oh no, Kanye's not saved. Oh no, you know, I, I have a good friend who, um, who's not on fire for God. Like he'll say he loves Jesus, and but he's still in a rap 